Now, I don't think I ever got a video of my touch probes here. These are based off of plans readily available on the internet, uh, mainly CNC Zone and mock support forums. So I've got a touch probe and a touch plate for tool setting. Um, they're both spring loaded. So that any any deflection at all of this tip will result in a trip and will tell the computer that hey, 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 I just hit an edge here. So it'll be useful for uh, edge finding, you know, corner finding, it'll find the edge, boop, boop. Um, center finding, like I could take this thing, put it on the machine, and it'll go, and go bop, touch, bop, touch, centered, touch, touch, and then find the exact center, which is really cool, and I've used it for that purpose quite a bit. I made, where did you go? You, and you. So I made a pointy tip, a quarter inch ball, and a six, uh, eighth inch ball. Pointy tip would be for um, digitizing, like uh, copy catting or, you know, um, stealing the pattern. I don't know what it's called. It would digitize every, like, say, five thousandths of an inch on this thing, and it would do a pattern, and it would find the text and give you a 3D uh, point cloud. And you can digitize anything. So anyway, here's a couple pictures of this thing. Um, biggest downfall that I've noticed so far is the wiring, how it's just soldered into the pins like that. Because every time I pick it up and move it and pick it up and move it and put it down and plug it in, these wires get stressed right here. And I know eventually they're going to break off. So putting a plug, like an actual uh, two or three prong plug into the side of the case would make it a lot more useful. Or, like I really plan to do, I'm going to make a wireless one using simple RF um, radio waves. I think that'll be a fun project and just something cool to do. So I added a little microphone jack into the case here. And I'm not gonna bolt it up at this second, but it's got an LED on the bottom. So anytime it trips, LED goes on. More as a visual indicator, which is quite handy. You can manually jog the machine until it touches and it lights up the workpiece, which is kind of sweet. And of course it goes to the side, but also straight down. So if you had uh, an automatic tool changer, or even a manual tool changer, um, you could set up a tool table very easily, and then just zero your part with this guy, and then all your tools are set, which is my next plan. Basically I'm taking a, a page out of Haas's book and copying everything he does. And then I figure from there, I'll come up with my own stuff. But uh, watching everything that he's done and the tools that he has kind of makes one jealous. So once I get there, I can uh, make anything. And already I'm making quite a lot of fun stuff that I couldn't make a month ago, two months ago. You know, for a while I thought CNC lathe was tops, was the coolest thing ever. A couple months ago I did my milling machine and the, the caliber of parts that you can do on a CNC milling machine are just insane. And it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, now I got it all kitted out with the rotary table and the tapping attachment and touch probes and all kinds of stuff. Next, I have to uh, copy Haas again and, and do the extended axes. So, I instead of what do I have, 10 inches side to side and X. I get like 18 or 20 or something. And right now I only have four and a half Y in and out. Uh, his, his change will get me like 12 or 16 or something, something ridiculous. So a lot more working area because 
even just to do this plate right here, um, it's four inches tall. The working area on the milling machine is barely big enough. It wouldn't be big enough to profile around the outside, which is a pain in the butt, because that's not a large piece. It's like four by seven. So, soon enough. <laughs>